What's up, YouTube? Low Budget Media Productions here, and today I have a deck profile, a deck that I really haven't touched in forever. Um, I'd say it's over a year, um, which is Battle Boxers. Uh, this is actually my favorite deck, um, like ever. I started playing it around, oh, uh, maybe uh, the summer 2014 format after the Dragon Rulers got limited um, all to one. And then I started play. I picked this deck up and I started playing it. I did pretty well with it um, at locals and such because that's all I ever have time to go to. But um, then since uh, when Duelist Alliance was released, like since that uh, spring summer 2014 format, the deck has gotten progressively worse. Um, so you have Duelist Alliance, which introduced Shadal's Burning Abyss and uh, Teller Knights and Yang Zings, so, um, which made Lee Yoke become worse with, uh, the introduction of Burning Abyss using the discard trap that didn't destroy, uh, in Phoenix Wiggling Blast and Karma Cut, and also with, uh, Yang Zings having Boxia. Then when New Challengers released, uh, Teller Knights got Triver, which bounced Lee Yoke back to hand, um, then, um, especially so, uh, the deck became terrible when Secret Forces came out, because, um, Necros had so many ways to just get over lead yoke um, with Unicor, uh, ne Necros of Brionic, and uh, Trishula. So I kind of stopped playing the deck after Secret Forces came out um, totally. So, but I have it here and I'm uh, kind of giving the deck a chance. Um, I've made it so where it has the best chance of doing well against a meta deck such as Monarchs, Pepe, or Cosmo. Um, even though Pepe is weakened, I still think the deck is uh, going to be a contender, especially at uh, YCS Dallas tomorrow. So make sure you, uh, if you're going to Dallas, make sure to side for Pepe because it's still going to be a thing. But anyway, I'll uh, get right onto the deck profile. So first you have three Battle Mock, three Glass Draw. He's still one of the best cards in the deck. Um, you always want to play three of him. He's your 2k beater, and then when he's targeted for an attack, he self-destructs. And then when he's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, he adds a battle and boxer monster from your graveyard to your hand. So he's really good. He recycles all your things so you can keep making your plays later on. Um, another thing to note is when he is detached from lead yoke um, by lead yoke's destruction avoiding effect, his effect will trigger because the, uh, the detaching off of lead yoke to avoid destruction is not a cost, so in its effect, uh, in effect, so this will still trigger. So three of this is always uh, good. Um, then I'm still always going to play three battling box or headgear. This is always going to be the best card in the deck. So when he is normal summoned, he sends a battling box or monster from your deck to your graveyard, and then once per turn, while it's in face of attack position, it can be killed by battle. So um, the not being able to kill by battle used to be good, but now everybody's just uh, swinging over everything. But nowadays, um, you want to play through this. I've been looking at like a few deck profiles um, online for this format to see if anybody has like some decent ideas um, with new text for the deck or new ways to play the deck. But um, I've seen a lot of people cutting him to two, which is really honestly stupid because you want to get your battle box. Since Rhoda went to one, um, like the last... Uh, since Rota went to one, the deck got a lot less consistent. So this card makes your consistency go up a lot, and you always want to play through it, especially now um, because you're going to need other things to help um, further your plays. So you're not restricted. So you're not basically just restricted to uh, making lead yoke or Nova Kaiser with switch hitter because he's your wolf part. Um, so you really need the things in the grave to use other things to further your plays besides switch hitter. So three of that. Um, then I'm still playing th three switch hitter, even though it's really lackluster in the net. I mean, uh, it's a too fair of a card because you can only special some battle boxes to turn you activate its effect, but it's still nice for making a free lead yoke or Nova Kaiser. So you always want to play that. Uh, when it's normal summon, you special summon a battle boxer. From your graveyard. Um, so yeah. Now here's a little change that I've been uh, working on. So I'm only playing two spar now. I've, I used to always preach uh, to play three spar, but now with the new format and uh, well with the new and everything coming out, 
you really want to be able to play this card um, and get around its restrictions of not having the battle phase because in this format, um, it's either you have to win as soon as possible or you're going to lose, um, especially against like Cosmo or Pepe. Um, because if you don't make a, if you don't push for as much damage as possible and like win in two to three turns, then uh, you're going to lose. So you, you, um, you want to be able to special summon with other things and uh, you kind of need the room. And this card just really restricts your being able to. Um, and then I'm playing two shadow. Um, during your main phase, you can detach an exceed material from a battle of monster monster you control and then you special summon it. You can only use that effect each turn. So he's really cool. Um, he's just free special summoning. Um, it triggers lead yoke, so he'll bump himself up. Um, just overall, just free summoning. But since you can only use it once per turn, you don't want to play three because then it's gonna clog. Uh, then two veil. When you take battle damage, you gain back the damage, and then you special summon it. So he's really good. He stops OTKs, um, and then he sets you up for plays next turn if you live. So that's pretty cool. Uh, never played three because it just clogs, and then you'll be stuck with two in your hand. Um, but now I'm playing uh, two mass chameleon. Still playing um, last profile, which was a while ago. Um, I I believe I cut chameleon um, in favor of playing a more faster build. But in this build, um, especially with this new format, you want to be able to have the access to synchros so you can uh, control the game a bit more. Um, especially being able to make things like Stardust Dragon, which are really really good against Pepe and uh, Cosmos to an extent. Um, because Pepe, you can just stop the Pendulum Sorcerer, stop the Wavering Eyes, stop the Luster Pendulums, um, and stuff like that. So you just want to be able to have access to it, and it also is a free exceed, um, so that's nice. Then, uh, for Hand Traps, I'm playing 2 Draw Luckbird. Um, this is honestly really, really good, this format. Um, you can just stop your opponent from searching, so then you can be able to, uh, attack on your turn. And then two max C because it's good against most things. Um, even though um, it's not really great against monarchs, um, I still really want to play it because you just need the extra draw cards so you can draw into more pieces to play. Um, so that's it. Four monsters for spells. Three upstart goblins because you need the speed in the deck now that you lost your other two rotas since the last time I made this deck. Um, a really interesting thing is three instant fusion. Now, uh, even though you don't really have a lot of ways to dump cards really fast, you have headgeared, which really which dumps a lot of things. So you can basically dump anything you want, any boxer you want to get into play, and then you can just bring it back with instant fusion, um, and then Norton it back. So it's basically uh, using another switch hitter that isn't restricted to um, summoning boxers for the rest of the turn. Um, so here's something I have, another thing I haven't played in a while is two Kaiser Coliseum, but I'm playing this because it's really good against Pepe, um, also decent against Cosmo, even though they, they're playing that, this card, but you kind of want to go back to the more slower control, um, you, the idea with this is, like, you want to be able to control the game when you want, so you control the game on your turns, so if you have this, um, if you have this, the way that you play is you play slow and controlling with the um, lead yoke sitting on Kaiser. But then if you don't have this, you want to just OTK as fast as possible. So there's two ways to play this deck with uh, this card. So that's really good. Um, and then two spirits, that's your reborn. Um, just bring back more stuff so you can extend your plays. Uh, two dark holes and red geki. Um, really basically just board clearing so you can push more damage. Um, then I'm playing one Soul Charge, the one of Rhoda, Foolish, and one Twin Twist. Now for the traps, uh, it's just all one of Time Space, Torrential, Emptiness, Bottomless, and Warp. I would be playing Solemn Strikes if I had them, but I sadly do not. So for the extra, uh, the Mandatory 3 Lead Yoke, this is the absolute. Uh, this is your boss monster. So if you don't know what he does, he takes two level four battle and boxer monsters, and then if a battle and boxer monster is you control be destroyed, uh, you can detach an exceed material from him instead. And then when he had detach, uh, when exceed material is detached from him, he gains 500, 800 attack. So he's really good. He goes up to thirty eight, which is nice for being over Dank Destroyer. Um, but 
he's just really lackluster now because there's so many other ways to get over him. Uh, you can get over him with Ignis, or you can get over him with uh, Pastel 101, stuff like that. Um, so uh, you play your three because you, you need to play three. Um, then two... Nova Kaiser. Um, so once per turn, you can attach a battle monster monster from your graveyard to it um, as a material, and then he gains a hundred attack break material. Then when he's destroyed by an opponent's card by battle or card effect, you can target battle and boxer monsters in your graveyard equal to the number of materials it had when it was destroyed, and then he special summon it. So it's basically like a free soul charge for the deck, um, which is really nice in conjunction with uh, number eighty six hero champion. Uh, however you want to say that, wrong dominion. So what you do is basically you have this, you keep that out, and then you pray that your stuff doesn't get destroyed, and you have like five materials under it, and then it dies. You special summon five, and then next turn, you can either normal summon or special summon other stuff to make your board bigger, and then you can just special summon him with four or five materials. So that's really, really nice uh, for not letting your opponent play Uh One Excalibur, because it's ulti and it looks nice, and you can make it, and it's good for you to get big thing. We're going for a game. Uh, then one Dweller, one Kesto, one King of the Frail Lumps to search your, uh, what you call it here, King of the, uh, Mask of Alien. Uh, your 101, the two Nordens, and then the only two singers I'm playing are Scrap Dragon and Stardust. Scrap Dragon is good for popping scales, popping really whatever you need. Uh, you can pop Cosmo ships if you need to, um, just so you can make their floating, whatever they float into, less vulnerable, less uh, threatening when you attack over them. And then the start is for, like, basically Pepe and maybe other. So this is uh, my revised version of this deck. Um, after this, if this, like, I'm probably going to be testing this deck a lot. Um, and if it doesn't do well, you're probably not going to see another deck profile for a while of this, but... Um, you will be seeing a lot more deck profiles. Um, the ban list, banning um, Juggler, kind of limited a few of the deck options that I was planning on profiling. Um, some, uh, One of them was Brilliant for Mage Zombies, which was basically uh, you you, you uh, use Brilliant Fusion and Zombies. Uh, so, you know, OTK. But anyway, so that didn't work out. But I still have a lot of other stuff planned, so... Always, always thank you guys so much for watching.